So how about that first reading? <laughs> Jacob Lim can go off with his sore hip. I uh, was going to preach on that this morning, and uh, given that tomorrow's uh, surgery day, I decided that comparing myself to Jacob at this juncture maybe isn't such a good idea. So I think I'll just focus on the gospel. And of course, standing up here on one foot uh, dictates brevity, so you'll be happy to hear that as well. You know, in our gospel reading this morning, we, uh, we find that this text begins at kind of uh, an odd place. Um, the, the, the text begins with, now when he had heard this, Well, that's a strange place to break the text up, isn't it? When he had heard what? Well, if you go back and uh, you you look at verses 1 through 12 that precede this, you'll find that uh, what Jesus heard was from his disciples during this long day of of, of preaching to the people, the masses who had gathered there to hear him. You will find that in in verses 1 through 12, the disciples uh, have come to inform him that his cousin, John the Baptist, has been beheaded by King Herod. So that is what Jesus had heard and certainly gives this this reading a a different context. So Jesus, uh, at at this point, having heard this news, he's he's looking for sort of a, a, a a place of respite, if you will, a place where he can sort of retreat to and and collect his thoughts. I mean, this must have been crushing news to him. And uh, so so uh, he was looking for for that opportunity to to, to sort of collect his thoughts and perhaps uh, engage in some prayer and and trying to understand the, the meaning of all this. But of course, you know, Jesus had been attracting followers, not just by the hundreds, but uh, on this particular day, by, by the thousands. And, um, you know, they, they had needs. They, they, uh, they'd been hanging on his every word all that day, and perhaps uh, for a number of days following him around leading up to this point. People who needed to hear Jesus' healing words. And so... Um, you know, out there in that, in that desolate land, it took little time for them to find Jesus uh, where, wherever it was that Jesus was trying to hide out. It took very little time before they located him. And the next thing you know, he's surrounded by these folks all once again. Now, you know, though Jesus was certainly hurting uh, over this loss that he experienced, You'll see in the text that Matthew says that Jesus saw the crowd and he had compassion on them. They were, um, they, they were such a, a needy group that it was impossible for Jesus not to notice. Oh, we haven't done that for a year. <laughs> it was impossible for Jesus not to notice their, their need because at that, by that point, it wasn't just a spiritual need that they had, but it was a physical need. These people had followed him out there, and for the most part, none of them had come prepared to spend a whole day. And so they had little in the way of provisions. They had uh, very little water. They had uh, very little food. And so it was clear to Jesus that they not only had spiritual needs, but they had physical needs as well. So Jesus' response to this in his compassion wasn't just to to stand there and and offer them a prayer. It wasn't just to to come out and and touch them. Instead, his response was as tangible as their need for food and water. He touched their lives that day in a way that would allow all of them, I think, to forever put their trust in him. He multiplied. Literally, that that paltry little bit of provision that that boy had provided them. And he fed their bodies. In fact, he didn't even uh, find that uh, there was a situation where anyone went without. He fed all 5,000 of them. And beyond that, they had 12 baskets left over. 
to take home in doggy bags, I guess. It, it, the whole thing wasn't about the hope for a better tomorrow. It, it wasn't about, in this particular case, you know, seeking the kingdom of God in some future uh, revelation. It was about caring for his people in the here and now. It was about caring for their tangible, physical needs in the here and now. You know, I think we too, when we come here to this place, when, when we gather together here in this place on Sunday mornings, we come with our own hunger to be filled. We come with, with an anticipation that Jesus is going to show up and um, I think our needs are rather noticeable to Jesus as well. I, I think it's important for each of us to remember that just like at that feeding of the 5,000 some 2,000 years ago, Jesus still today cares deeply for all those things that we're muddled up in in our daily lives right now. So if you've come here today, with, with a hunger that needs to be filled, be assured that Jesus knows this. And much like he asked his uh, disciples to distribute loaves and, and fishes to the masses 2,000 years ago, so today he invites us to come here to this, to this table and to sit and eat. But he also asks us to allow him to wait on our tables and to serve us. I mean, it's a daunting task to feed a large crowd, but he did so with, with plenty left to spare. Jesus knew the needs of his people then, and he knows your needs today. He's concerned about your present life. He's concerned about your future. He is the bread of life. He is what you crave whether you recognize it or not. So turn to him this morning with your needs and don't forget to add, uh, thank him for your prayers that certainly will be answered.